Hello and welcome back to The Coding Circus. Today we are going to look at creating uh, a kind of gallery space that we can add in pictures to and eventually we're going to make those grabbable pictures and have an event occur when we grab and when we release those pictures. So this is a new thing. We're going to combine what we learned with functions and add into that uh, some built-in event handling that exists inside of Wizard. So let's dive right in and look at the inspector. And you can see I have this box world that I've created, which is basically just four blue walls with a door, garage door. And then you'll see that I added something here, a spotlight. Let me delete them and show you how I add them. So what you do is you go up here to create and then click light. Now you can choose what kind of light you want. I'm going to choose a spotlight. Feel free to play with the different lights. And you can see a light object appears on the screen. Now we have all the same controls we had with any other object. And I'm going to move this light using the arrow controls. I'm going to bring it up to this wall and you can see that like, it doesn't really look like there's a light there and that's because the intensity is really low so if you look over here on the far right hand side there's something that says intensity uh, it's underneath light there's also a color there's a type so we can kind of change some of the effects of the light so I'm going to set the intensity to 100 so we can see the light and now if we pull it back a little bit, you can see our spotlight here shining up on the wall. And we can bring it a little closer if we want to make it smaller. There we go. Kind of fills up the whole wall there. And if I want to change the color, I can click on the color and use the color picker and change the color of my light if I want. And then all of a sudden the light will become Whoops, didn't save it. Forgot to click OK. There we go. You can see how the color is changing as I click on these different lights. I go with blue light. We can change all the different colors. We're going to go back to kind of like a just plain white light. OK, I'm going to hit cancel. So we have our, our spotlight. I'll show you what some of the other looks look like. This is directional. It kind of just lights up the entire wall. This is a spot. This is a point light, uh, which kind of sets light in spots kind of all around um, the room. Uh, you can see it kind of reflects a little bit. So I want to go to the spotlight. And I'm going to add in another one of these. Create light spotlight and position it on the other side of the wall. Notice after you've positioned the light, I'm gonna change the intensity again to 100, that um, you can't actually physically see the light object in the environment, and that's okay. We don't actually wanna see the, the light object in the environment. Other than that white thing there. And when we actually run it in Vizard, um, we won't see our spotlight object just kind of floating in a world. The only thing that'll be on the wall is the light. So now I have two lights there. You're gonna add up as many lights as you need to light up your walls. And now that we have done this done, I'm gonna close this, save my changes, my box world. And now what we're gonna do is talk about adding a picture. So I'm gonna go into Sketchfab and this I found this kind of interesting looking picture. And I'm gonna download it. Make sure when you search for pictures, um, when you type in your search, I just did, here we go. I just did a painting. Make sure you're choosing Creative Commons uh, where you, um, you know, you can select all of these if you want and it kind of opens up your search, but make sure it is Creative Commons and then you can choose anything in here that's a picture, you know, a painting. So something like this, it's another painting. 
There we go. So, uh, something happened. Well, maybe I'll download this one. So I'm going to download the 3D model. Uh, auto convert to GLTF. I'm in Sketchfab, remember. And you're going to have to play by ear which picture you download. Because some will work well, some won't. You'll see my Mona Lisa picture didn't work so well, but I'm just going to go with it. So I downloaded it. Now, I'm going to go back to Wizard. And I'm going to go back to that inspector. Because what happened was when I downloaded it, I got a zip file. And um, as it's downloading, it's still downloading. And in the zip file are a whole bunch of other files. Actually, I'll do this with the Mona Lisa while it's downloading. And the problem is that I don't have a great way of adding that into Wizard with all those different files. Fortunately, I can use the inspector and add, just add the picture into the inspector. Oh, it looks like it downloaded. Oh, there's the zip file. So I'm going to unzip it. Show you me doing that. I'm going to unzip it. Just extracting it all. There we go. Okay. So now I have my folder where I have my painting. And I'm going to add my scene into Wizard. So the only thing that's going to be in the scene is this painting. There it is. I'm going to position a little bit better because it kind of sits like weird. So I want to raise it up using my positioning tools. Kind of bring it up. And then I think I want to rotate it a little bit so that way it's facing me when it first goes into the scene. Like that. There we go. So now I'm going to go to File, Export as a Single File. And, um, wow, I'm just going to, I'm just going to call this, by the guy's name, Z-D-Z-I-S-L-A-W dot O-S-G-B. Save. Okay. Now I'm going to go back into my wizard and one of the things that we learned how to do was after we added our environment, environment viz fix .add child box world, and I got my message there, which we're going to get back to in a little bit. We learned how to add a child in code by using a variable. So this is the name of the file I was using. I'm going to set up a variable name for this. I'll just use the same. There we go. This is law. And I'm going to use this viz.addChild command. And it has the position and scale in it that will position it on the screen. And this is the name of my file that I want to put on the screen. Like that. Now, you might want to choose a position that makes sense and a scale that makes sense. You might have to do some experimentation to see where it goes. Right now I know this is um, going to be right on top of the Mona Lisa, so I'm going to move it to the actual other side by using a negative value, which will flip it to the other side of the screen, theoretically. And I'm just going to run this and see how it goes. It's going to take a second to render. And there it is. So it's a little small. I probably want to make it bigger. The Mona Lisa I had to make smaller. So I'm going to go in and change my scale here. And you could probably do that thing where you add in the person into the environment just to, to match the scale for both. I didn't take that step because it's just as easy to do it here in Wizard. Relaunch. And there it is. We can see our picture. I'm going to fly over here. So it's off a little bit. I might want to adjust it so it's better in the spot, but you can see it's on the wall. 
So now we've added our picture to the wall. It is time to make it a grabbable object and add it to our list of grabbing items. So if you remember how we did this before, um, we just had a list that had listed in our grabbable objects. And these are the grabbable objects I had in there before. We had a circus ball and an Arduino, so we're not going to use that. We're going to use Mona and this guy. This is law. Then I set my grab arbor equal to biz connect, grab tool, grabber, grab dot set items, grabbable objects. And I'm going to give you uh, the empty box room and these two paintings to start to kind of play around with. But you can find your own paintings. And we'll come back to the message in a minute. Clean this up a little bit. Oops, too much. Okay, so now we're going to run this. So if we go back, oops, what happened? Did I lose my world? Let me try that again. Reload it. There we go. So now I can fly in and grab. You can see it gets highlighted, so I can grab it. Now be careful, if it's too big, it becomes kind of difficult to grab. You can't see the outline on it. So you kind of have to be careful of that when you're sizing your picture. And then here's my other picture. And you can see the outline, I can grab that. Okay, so now we got a grabbable um, object. Let's talk about these wizard callback built-in events. So this is when um, we want to respond to an event that happens in the wizard world. And wizard has some built-in events. So for example, when we take our grabber and we grab onto our picture, the grabber.grab event triggers. So it's like a mouse click, only it's not a mouse click, it's a grab event. We're grabbing the picture. And then uh, there's a release event, and then there's also an on collide event, um, which we'll talk about later, but it's gonna be you know interesting to, to look at. So we need to write methods, or functions rather, that will handle those on grab events. So what are we going to do when our wizard character, our um, little virtual hand there, grabs our picture. So I thought it'd be a great idea to add a message to our screen that says what the picture is that we're grabbing. So let me go ahead and show you how we're gonna do that. The first thing we're gonna add in is a message. So let me go ahead and show you that. We'll come back to our defined functions in a minute. So I'm going to add in a message that says my gallery right here, my gallery. And then I'm going to add it to the screen. Now, before we did the 3D text, we've done the 2D text. This is just viz.screen because I want the message to say on the screen, no matter what direction I'm facing, I'll always be able to see where I'm at. Now, let's go and look at these functions. So at the top, I've defined an on grab, and then I sent it a parameter that's going to be uh, the object that's sent, the thing that we grabbed. Uh, so we're going to send an argument, namely the thing that we grabbed, and that's going to be caused by the event. The event returns the thing that we grabbed. And it's going to map it to the variable e. Now we could call it anything we want. We could call it um, grabbed object, whatever you want. But a lot of times they'll use a single letter e to represent some element or o to represent some object. So we're just going to use e because it's convention that we normally do. Then I'm going to test it. So remember our conditionals. If e.grabbed 
is equal to Mona. So if the thing grabbed was Mona, we're going to change the text message to Mona. If the thing grabbed was uh, Zizidzlaw, then I'm going to change the message to Zizidzlaw. Now, I need an on release as well. So we're going to create another method that says on release. I think I said the gallery. So if I released Mona, I'm going to say the gallery. And if I released Zizidlaw, it's going to go back to the gallery. So that way, when I click it, it's going to say um, what it is, uh, Mona Lisa. And when I release it, it's going to go back to saying the gallery. So let's go ahead and take a look at that action. Um, and we'll deal with on another lesson what Collide does. So let's run this. And we can see we have our two pictures up there. I'm going to fly in here. And right now it says My Gallery. And you'll be able to see that it actually does change. Because when I grab it, it's going to say Zizidlaw, right? When I release it, it's going to say The Gallery. Remember, it started saying My Gallery. And I'm going to fly over here. And I'm going to grab this one. Make sure I get the green box around it. Whoops. Sometimes I do that. Sometimes it's better if you just do full screen. And I can see the Mona. Now, if you want to kind of sit back from the picture a little bit, remember, we have the ability to fly in that hand using two finger drag on your mouse keypad or the scroll bar. And I can do it that way. And it makes it a little bit further away so I can actually know that I'm seeing the picture. And I click it and it says Mona. And I can kind of look over here and do the same thing with that hand, fly in just a little bit. And then that way, I'm keeping my distance a little bit, and I can kind of see the picture. And there we go. So now we have our full functionality of our world. And we can have a gallery now where when we click on the pictures, it says what is on our picture. That is all for today. I will see you next time.